Do you guys got it? Laura, do you have yours? I'm already eating. <laughs> oh, <just laughs> salute. Of it would be good. I love broccoli, so mm. I'll try that cream. Mm -hmm. To me, for mine, I'd still add a little more salt to the cheese to balance out the sweetness of the honey or just delete the honey. Very good. No, I, I like the hint of the crushed red peppers in it. Mm -hmm. I am so, so thankful that you guys have wanted to cook with me, join me on this, you know, day's thing. And, uh, you know, we're just here to have a good time. And um, so, yeah, let me think. So, yeah, thank you guys all for coming and joining me. This is my little kitchen in my new home. Um, I'm not on the farm anymore. So, um, you guys gave some great ideas. In fact, everyone gave uh, lots of ideas on what to cook. But I have found that on a Zoom call and doing these, um, unless you want to do like a two, three hour thing and have breaks, give it time to cook and all this other stuff, I thought it'd be great just to do a really simple appetizer app that could go all year long, especially during the spring and summer with broccoli. And, but I'll get into the recipe later. But why don't we get into you guys? So Olivia, Olivia Kaufman, she yeah. said oh. years. Yep, my name's Casey. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm still signed in under my daughter. Oh, <laughs> she has okay. to have Zoom appointments. I'm sorry. That's why I was like, I don't think I heard my name. But oh, yes, <laughs> well, that's what I thought because that's what I yeah. thought. Someone said Olivia, and we're like, okay. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, my name's Casey. Yep. Oh, hi, Casey. Hi. So uh, tell us something about you or maybe why you want to be a part of this or why you follow me or yeah. something like that. I'm just I've, kidding. Yeah, um, I've watched the show since I was little. <laughs> I've watched it for a long, long time. So I just have always liked following you guys. It's very, very real and, you know, easy to relate with. So, um, yeah, that's why I follow. Um, I have... You. Yep, I have um, three little kids here and then one in heaven. Um, I have a, my oldest one is 12. Okay. My son, Zach, his name's Zachary. <laughs> um, and then I have um, Lena is my middle one. She's seven. And then my littlest is Olivia and she's three. Oh, okay, Olivia, three. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> may I ask, um, if you don't want to mention it, that's fine. Uh, why do you, uh, why, uh, how did you lose one of your child's? Uh, my daughter, Madison, um, was stillborn at 31 weeks, um, oh, about sorry. a year before I had Olivia. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah, so sorry, that, that is very, very hard. Yeah. I, I know a number of people, especially within the little people community, that mm -hmm. have experienced that with uh, the complications of double dominancy and dwarfism and stuff like that. So right. anyway, I'm very sorry, but you are definitely you. blessed with three kids. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're a NICU nurse? I am. I work at St. Louis Children's Hospital. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you for being one of our essential workers. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Then we have Laura Percado. Percado? Piscardo. Piscardo. Okay. Yep. Hey, Laura, how's it going? It's going. How are you? Yeah. Um, you know what? Well, we're all hanging in there. We are definitely <laughs> in challenging times. Yes, we are. Uh, where are you again? We're in Fallensby, West Virginia. Wow. We're in the northern panhandle of West Virginia. So we're in the tri-state area between Ohio and Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, I can be in Pittsburgh in 30 minutes yeah. from where we live. So um, it's nice and cool here right now. Yeah. We're taking it. Uh, it's supposed to be hot by the weekend in the 90s. Yeah, that's us here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you're a respiratory uh, therapist. I think yeah. it's at a school, right? What's that? No, uh, no, no. We're at medical center. Oh, okay. You yeah, know what? There's so many people that you know wanted to be a part of this. So if, I apologize. I might yes. have gotten okay. Um, how how are you guys doing with this whole COVID? You know what? Thing? We've been really fortunate. Um, we have done, I think our hospital has done around 
over 2000 tests and we've only had 28 positives. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So we're in like this little bubble. Um, yeah. We have not been hit as hard, you know, as some of these bigger cities and we're very thankful for that. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've had a handful, but not, we're not dealing with it like some of these bigger cities are. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely the bigger cities. I mean, I can understand New York or, you know, even St. Louis, Minneapolis or San Francisco. Right. New York and those cities because they're all, you know, I mean, you got a lot of cramped people. You got townhouses, apartments, inner city, urban life. And right. So anyway, yeah, I, I, I count my blessings. Lisa's counting her blessings that we're safe, we're healthy. You know, she's been pretty much at home. I've been pretty much at home. So we felt like this was all good for us to be yes. together. <laughs> Small gathering, just yeah. a friend. So well, yeah. my husband is actually um, an emergency room physician. He actually got infected in April. Oh, so wow. we, we've been through it. Thankfully, he was very mild symptoms, a dry cough, low temp one day. That was it. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, counter well, blessing. The other thing we got to really, you know, uh, be keeping in our prayers and being uh, thankful for all of you guys, essential workers that are doing what you're doing, whether it be in a hospital, whether it be for kids and teachers and all that stuff, especially you guys in the medical field. I mean, you're like right there in contact with all of that. And I know some of these spikes yes. are unfortunately hitting, you know, the, the medical field uh, yeah. a lot. So thank you for being a part of this. One other question. Why did you want to be a part of this? <laughs> um, you know, I have, I've watched your show from the beginning yeah. and then as, things progressed, I have sprouted off and I follow all of you on social media. So, um, and I love to watch your cooking episodes. Yeah. So yeah. when you had announced that, I was like, oh, that would be so much fun. Yeah. Never in a million years thought I would be chosen. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I want to thank you for that opportunity. This is amazing. Well, yes. thank you. Thank yes. you guys for being a part of it. Yes. I am not perfect. I just kind of, <laughs> I, you know, I've definitely good. got a recipe here, but I'll get into the more of the, what I do for cooking. Um, thank you, Laura, Laura. Thank you for being here. So, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi. How are you? I am good. Um, you're mute. Oh no. I should be on. Can you hear me? There. Okay. You can hear me better now. Yeah. Do you want to turn your volume up? I'm all the way up. Oh wow. Okay. There you okay. go. Good. There you go. Now. You're full screen. <laughs> yeah. So how, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. yeah. Are you hanging in there with, um, I guess, uh, 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 lunches? I think you do lunch prep school for school district kids. Can you tell us, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? I work for nutrition in uh, elementary school. Huh. And when this all hit, we were asked to provide meals. Um, the kids are so used to their lunch, and so we thought this would be the best way for them to get a part of what's normal yes. them every day. And the parents come, we all prepare them at the high school, and the parents come and they're all bagged in a bag. They get a breakfast, they get a lunch, um, they get some milk. And the parents come and they get as many bags as they need for how many kids they have. And yeah. Are you in a, um, are you in a how should I say, a low income area where, where this is like a somewhat of a necessity for these kids or is it just- I would say no. Okay. It's not like a poverty area, yeah. but because of COVID parents have been hit pretty hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, to yeah, me, that kind of, that, that's essential because I just have a junior high just, I don't know, a couple of blocks from me. And, you know, there's a, I, I, I live in a, you know, fairly decent, you know, kind of well-off uh, uh, neighborhood. But in any school district, there's always those kids who will always struggle and they do miss and are a part of, you know, receiving a breakfast. Right. receiving a lunch uh, at no cost to them. And the parents have given us a lot of feedback and they're like super appreciative. And because of it, um, last week, Thursday was technically supposed to be the last day of school. Oh, wow. We're going to continue it through the summer because some 
haven't been able to go back to work yet. That's great news. That's great. We're doing like we package like seven hundred, six, seven hundred lunches every day. Yeah. Wow. That's and a starting lot. Next week we're gonna do like eight hundred lunches because okay. other districts are gonna come to our school to get meals because they're gonna stop now that school's done. Well, I definitely know that the summertime is a struggle because mm -hmm. each state is different. How they're opening up, what they can do, what's available, yeah. and, and everything. They're not sure that school's even going to open up in September. Right. Yeah. Um, and maybe January. They're talking. There's so many variables to consider to let them come back. Mm -hmm. you know, from riding the bus to school, to being picked up, to having daycare after school, rooms class sizes. Oh, yeah. Like, all kinds of variables as many people um, as many kids that are in our cafeteria at one time right yeah that's a lot of variables nightmare so yeah. where are you located i'm in milwaukee wisconsin oh yeah man i love it you guys are my midwest i'm originally from michigan and so um you know i, I love my midwest still i'll tell you yeah. If it wasn't because I got married, I, I would still be hanging out in my home. <laughs> I, I, I tell you that. Well, again, um, I, you know, again, thank you guys for joining me. Um, ask your questions. I think you guys kind of gave us some questions ahead of time. I think you know what they are, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, just... um, you know, after, you know, we talk, we cook or whatever, you guys can cook along with me. I don't know. Are any of you guys doing that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> I made the recipe ahead of time just to make sure it all worked. So let me give you a preview. Oh, that's a surprise for the end. No, no. Ah. <laughs> uh, can you see that? It looks good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, this is, it's not complicated. Sometimes the prep can be complicated, but um, like I said, so many wonderful recipes, but um, you guys had a lot of great ideas. Some people said, you know, we love your chicken, chicken enchiladas. Can you make a shepherd's pie? Can you make pumpkin pie and all that stuff? But when you're on a Zoom call, unless you all want to be on for like two, three hours, because um, everyone would have to have all the food at least prep, and then cooking it, then baking it. And we've tried and, that before. <laughs> and I, I just thought, those will be great ideas that I'll create videos for and hopefully people will enjoy it. But I thought with the summertime and just maybe doing backyard parties, backyard barbecues and stuff like that, it'd be kind of fun to have an app. I'm hoping you guys will have fun doing this. I'm hoping you will enjoy it. This is a very flexible appetizer. If you don't like um, broccoli, you can, I even, if you have a garden, use spring peas on it. I think that would be nice. Um, just slightly mashed a little bit. You'd have to cook them a little bit. Obviously, we cook the broccoli. Uh, what else would we? If you really get the very new asparagus and just mm -hmm. do the little tip of it and the little part of the stem to it and roast that, I think that would be very uh, good on this too. I'm trying to think of another spring vegetable. I think on the ricotta, if you did roasted tomatoes and then yeah. just put those on there too with basil instead. So this is one kind of bruschetta. You guys might have your own, but I just came up with this. And in fact, I even have a modification to this whole thing. <laughs> I think I do. I think it's slightly that. Well, let's start cooking. But I like ricotta cheese because uh, creme fraiche has a little sweetness to it. And I didn't want that. So I'm hoping you did some prep. If not, we can wait for you to be done. Yeah, and for I, those that are not doing it, that's fine. Oh, yeah. That's just perfect. chime in fun. with questions. You don't have to just, just follow along with us. We're just trying to have some fun. So I used a bag broccoli. I thought that was easier. You can do a head. It's cheaper. And, you know, just cut up your broccoli pieces into bite-sized pieces, in fact. And the reason, because you don't want it too big. You don't want this big broccoli piece in your mouth. And... Um, Lisa, you didn't even try this when you came here. So yeah, it's just, you know, bite-sized pieces. You know, we're very good. Oh, I know what I was gonna do for them. So yeah, uh, everyone got their broccoli done? Yes. Yep. All right. Yes. Way to go. Okay, <laughs> since um, broccoli is gonna take a little bit longer to cook, you have your garlic. 
trapped. Now, the one thing yes. I did this earlier today, and the one thing that I found was a little bit harder, I still have the skin on, but I didn't cut off the end just ever so slightly in this end. So when I squeezed it, it didn't come out the end that was kind of the harder part, and then it got kind of messy. It's kind of a messy thing anyway, but you know, whatever. I think what this would have been better is not to separate them into cloves, but actually set your whole clove on the baking dish. Because that way you've got the whole thing in your hand. It's still all attached and all you have to do is squeeze it. So anyway, got your uh, garlic prepped? Prepped meaning? Yeah. Oh, prepped. No, prepped meaning uh, all ready to put on the baking sheet. Okay, got it. So yes, yes we're going to go do that. You have your oven on. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just put our garlic on our baking cookie sheet or baking pan. And then my olive oil, where'd that go? Mm -hmm. That's for the bread. Oh, for later. Yep. So I'm just gonna drizzle some olive oil on my stuff. Now, the funny thing is, when I've done it, if I'm not careful, I drowned my broccoli too much and I roasted and then I'm like, okay, why is this thing not crispy and it's kind of like soggy. That's what happens when you wing it. <laughs> Oops. Now see, the broccoli piece fell on the floor and got caught. If you guys all weren't on Zoom, that broccoli piece would be back in the bowl. <laughs> but it ain't happening now. After you watch it, right? So I usually like to stir up my broccoli before I add a little, can you hand me the salt and pepper? Mm -hmm. Before I add a little salt and pepper to this. Have you guys ever made bruschettas or crostinis or whatever? No. Yeah. Like this? <laughs> no. Have you, Laura? Oh yeah, my husband's Italian. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Okay, Thank I wanna, um, uh, oh. you're Laura, right? Yes. Yes. Um, What's your, what's your special secret to a meatball recipe? Oh, you know what? He makes the meatballs in this house. Oh, yeah, okay. I can't, I can't make meatballs as well as he does, but he makes me make the sauce because he says my sauce is better. Okay, <laughs> how do you make your sauce? Um, I usually buy the whole tomatoes and then I put them through a food mill. Okay. Um, it, it's just really a basic sauce. Garlic, onion, um, basil? sugar, basil oregano, um, oh, yeah. parmesan cheese. I put parmesan cheese actually right into my sauce. Oh, wow. Um, All right, then I'm not so bad. I do that <laughs> too. Woo -hoo. What part of Italy is he from? Um, Calabrese. Oh, so am I. Really? Yeah, but we don't put any cheese in our sauce. We put it in Well, that's meat. because it's not his, it's mine. <laughs> oh, okay. We put it in the meatballs and then it kind of goes into the sauce. Well, and we, we cook the meatballs in the sauce. Yeah, yeah. He makes the meat mixture and makes the balls, and we just let him poach in the sauce while it's cooking. Oh. Okay, if you guys are ready, let's dump them in here, because this will take, you know, time can vary on something like this. It depends on your oven. It depends on where you're placing it in your oven. I would go anywhere, give it within five minutes. What, well, what did I put on this recipe? Um... I put on here 15, almost 25 minutes. I tell you the truth, I would back that off. I would check it after 15 minutes and go from five minutes increments after that. So are we all ready to stick it in the oven? So we went 400, preheat the oven to 400, and then put that in. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. You know what, guys? I will go by step one, step two if you want. But I have a feeling I might have to reorganize this yep. thing. Anyway, my broccoli is going in the oven at um, 400 for, you're saying 10 minutes or low? 15. 15. And I, how many times I have um, burnt okay. my food. So I have a timer. <laughs> so why that is happening. What are we gonna do now? What about the bread? Yeah, the bread's good. Um, you guys have your bread sliced up? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, uh, Casey, gosh, I have to remember. You're Casey, not a... <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. That is a very nice name. I love that name. I, Thanks. I had somebody use my computer before and they put their name in and it took me probably three months to figure out how to change the name, so. <laughs> I know, and it's different on a phone versus a computer and I never can remember to change it, so. <laughs> we get it so um Casey what is your favorite thing to cook um probably pasta honestly that's what my kids eat the most of quite frankly they eat pasta and pizza so that's what I make most of the time you know what to me if you're a busy family and you've got young kids and mm -hmm. and eat, uh, and I would have to say uh, even not even but most especially if you're on a budget to me pasta should be your friend I mean, yeah. it goes far. You can do wheat pasta or higher in protein pasta, whatever it may be. But, you know, it, it just goes far. You yes. can add chicken to it. You could buy a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and, um, you know, shred mix that, it mix it in there, do a yeah. cream sauce, do Alfredo, do spaghetti sauce or add tomato veggies. sauce. Yeah, add veggies. I mean, it just, I, I, I don't know. Pasta was my friend when I had younger kids, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now I have a fiance that's a meat and potato man, and I'm like, oh, brother. We need a more. We need <laughs> So anyway, okay, the bread, because the bread really is not going to take that long. Okay, you know what, you guys, you can do it however you want, but the other thing that I would change on this recipe, because I think I was thinking of croutons, I don't think this works putting this all together in a bowl. So what I would suggest you do is put a little oil in a little dish, put your little salt and pepper in there and have like a little pastry brush or whatever and just lightly brush each side of your bread. I think it's easier. I think it's less messy, less clumsy. So we can go ahead and do that. Where's my salt? Oh yeah, salt and pepper again, Lisa. Pepper. One thing I had a hard time finding because of this whole, um, you know, COVID thing is I had, to, I had to bake my uh, baguette ahead of time. It wasn't already baked in the bakery. What else did I find? There's something else I couldn't find. Um, Can you guys hear that? My landscaper person is here. <laughs> It'll be loud. Well, we're just gonna okay, do so um, just brush your bread. Easy peasy. If it gets too loud, we might do a little pause. Hey, Joe, do you have any kids? No, um, but we have helped raise my nephew after my brother died. Hey. Oh, that's oh I'm so sorry. How is your uh, sister-in-law doing? Um, well, he died in 2007, and... Um, he was three at the time, but now he's going to turn 17. In fact, he just had a job interview today, just got a job. So, wow, oh. big congrats to him. And he just, um, passed his junior year. He's heading to senior year and Saturday we're going to take senior photos. Uh -huh. So, no, um, that's very right. may I ask how your brother died? He had a one in a million rare lung disease. Wow. And I just, I had a bad feeling one day and I went over there. Like I was always over there to help with cleaning and cook, uh, taking care of Aiden and grocery shopping and that kind of stuff to help him. And I just had a bad feeling one day and I went there and I, he looked like he was sleeping and I went to touch him and tell him that I was there. Oh, and that was he, it ice cold and Aiden was there and he was telling me shh daddy's sleeping <laughs> oh wow yeah, yeah. Oh, and then yeah. I tried yeah. calling 911 and they told me I was out of the jurisdiction and it was just a big mess oh, oh I'm so sorry that is a tough one now does he live with you no he lives with his mom but he's here pretty often yeah yeah do, um, I would presume that you and your sister-in-law get along fine. They weren't married 
um, but she, yeah, she's, um, she's going through a divorce right now. So where she relies on us to help with Aiden. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you are such a blessing and what a blessing to be able to be there for your nephew. Well, and he's got brothers too, and they call us, you know, aunt and uncle and. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, That's awesome. Family, so it was, yeah, it just made sense that to include them. My brother knew that when um, I would give aid in traditions, and it just made sense to include his brother in traditions. Yeah. And, yeah. So. No, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. We would spend well, a lot of time here. To here. To that one. Yeah. No, that, that is amazing. That is one thing that I've always missed um, when I got married because I was away from my sister. And my brother had moved to Colorado, but away from my sister, my nieces, my nephews, my brother married late, but I don't know, just, just being close to family and having that connection and, you know, having that like, hey, can you help me out? And I got to go do this or whatever. It's, yeah. you know, I don't know. It's important to me. Here over the weekend, we had a barbecue on Saturday, so. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. You guys done? Let's put them in the oven if you haven't done it already. <laughs> okay, I'm still getting used to my kitchen, people. <laughs> do, you like do, you like to do any of you guys like to cook? Or is it just something you've done and it's just the norm? We um, changed to like a low carb, high protein diet. And now with this COVID thing, it was hard to find those kinds of things. Oh. So we kind of got off of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was a whole change to change how you cooked. And I started eating things that I never heard of and things that I never liked before. I never ate fish before. And I started really? eating that. Yeah. Oh. Wow, see? I tried rutabaga and spaghetti squash and things that I never heard of before. Well, uh, let me ask um, Casey. Do you like yeah. to cook or is it just something you need to do? Um, I like to cook most of the time. I don't like doing the dishes afterwards, but I do like to cook. <laughs> I think there's two things that I'd love to do, have is a gardener, because I'm not really a gardener. And uh, well, Chris is great at cleaning up, I tell you. It's Perfect, wonderful. Yeah, I don't like to clean up too. Probably I'm really a, a messy cook, meaning I, you know, I just got stuff around and just all this stuff. Um, yeah. How about you, um, Laura? What's that? Do you like to cook or is it just something you do? And I, I do like to cook and mostly I like to bake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My daughter really likes to bake. Um, I went out to visit her in Spokane and it was so fun to bake bread with her because she, mm -hmm. I don't know, yeast has not always been my friend. And it was just, so it was fun to bake with her because I asked her a lot of questions about, in fact, David, if you're hearing me, I will send you that video of her and I making bread together. Um, awesome. So yeah, okay. Do you guys have any questions? Score. What do you do? <laughs> do you guys have anything to ask me? Any plans okay. for a cookbook? Pardon? Any plans for a cookbook? You know, um, I was hoping to have gotten one in the fall, but I'm usually really delayed on a lot of those big projects. <laughs> and um, I try to scooter a lot. I, I would like to do one. I think it's fun doing a YouTube video and just doing this kind of thing. Yeah. And that way I can make more elaborate meals and edit and cut and all that stuff and provide, you know, people the recipe then. I think once I get enough and try different things, I might collect them all and say, here, you know, here's a recipe. But um, I think I'll self-publish that book. And I think as soon as something like that could be out, it would probably be towards the end of next year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do a DVD book. What? Do a DVD cookbook. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I know. Technology, though, at my age, technology. Yeah. I'm like, man, I got to pay people to help me because, 
I cannot do it fast enough. I mean, I, I did an Instagram post uh, for uh, a company, which I really like what they do. It's like Shutterfly. It's called Mixbook. And, um, oh, it took me like two hours to make sure that each little story frame was just right. The verbiage on it, you know, did I do that right? Tagging everyone. And then, I know, it's a project. Oh, everything, my God. Everything. <laughs> and then, um, then I have to send it to them. And then if they want to tweak it, I'm like, okay, how do I go back to that slide and actually tweak it without doing it all over again? So I don't know. Yeah, hopefully I do a, another cookbook. I wouldn't mind doing a children's book. And then I wouldn't mind doing another book that, because um, I have my book out called A Little Me. I wouldn't mind doing a, a shorter, like more of a, a thought provoking book of just, key main things like AMVP, acceptance, attitude, matter, value, purpose. And what is my perspective on all that and in my life and narrow it down, not just about my life, but how I think it could be helpful for, for other people and stuff. Oh, oh, let's check our broccoli. <laughs> if you haven't already. Okay, mine needs, mine needs to go a little bit more. How much longer? I'm going to say five minutes. Oh, geez. Now, the one thing about your bread, you may want to check your bread and then maybe just turn it over. 